Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Business of Possibility podcast with Ulster University Business School. I'm Wendy Austin and in the series we've been diving deep into the world of business in Northern Ireland, finding out how they're staying afloat and how innovation and an entrepreneurial spirit are helping us along the path to recovery. Also, how skills are increasingly vital and that has literally come up in every single podcast that we've done. So today we're looking at degree apprenticeships from bridging higher level skills gaps to improving organizational productivity. They provide valuable opportunities to recruit new talent and to upskill in key sectors of the economy. I have a stellar panel with me, so let me introduce you to Deborah Stevenson, People and Operations Director at PwC UK, Judith Wiley, Senior Lecturer at Ulster University Business School, Dermot Dempster is Managing Director, Clonallan Laboratories Limited, and we've got former apprentice Johnny Mooney with us, who's a consultant now with Deloitte. They're all going to help to demystify the world of degree level apprenticeships for young people and for businesses. So maybe to just start us off, uh, I'm sure there are lots of you listening and watching who've heard the term degree apprentice, uh, who maybe know a bit about it, but I'm sure that you would equally like to know a lot more. So Judith, exactly what are degree apprenticeships and how do they work? Thanks, Wendy. So I'm course director on um, what was Northern Ireland's first degree level apprenticeship in business technology. And it really was um, developed to try and sort of bridge a gap, I suppose, in skills development and attract school leavers and allow them to work and study at the same time. So earn as you learn, if you like, as a new model for Northern Ireland in terms of how we um, produce graduates ready for the workplace, the future of work, really, I suppose, um, which we're always hearing all about. But in a nutshell, they're really um, where an employer has a new employee and they the employee um, studies towards a degree level apprenticeship or indeed master's level as we've since developed and they learn in the in the classroom as well studying towards a degree so usually students will work for four days a week and they they will come into university usually on a Friday and um, complete their studies that way so it's all about I suppose application of knowledge both from the theory they learn in the workplace into the um, into the the classroom and from the classroom into the workplace so it's it's sort of working together and using and sharing all of those experiences in a really dynamic learning environment and how do those young people us and i assume they mostly are young people how do they get to the point where they're studying for a degree apprenticeship and, and working as well how does how does the beginning of it work Yes, well, you're quite right. So the majority of the, the higher level apprentices that we do have, particularly on our undergraduate degree programmes, are school leavers. So great pull of talent there coming through from school into the workplace and into university. But I would also say that there is a market here for anybody that wants to upskill or reskill or re-enter the workplace as well using higher level apprenticeships. But for anybody interested in a higher level apprenticeship, really recruitment is done um, through the employer themselves. Because they, that's where you're going to be working. That's where, you know, you need to know that you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you in the workplace. But we can facilitate that through the university. And we've got lots of resources online at our Ulster University Apprenticeship Hub, really getting um, matching up potential apprentices with employers and matching employers with potential new apprentices. So speaking of employers, we have a couple of them with us today, obviously. Deborah, perhaps you could talk uh, to us a bit about what you do at PwC and your whole involvement in the degree apprenticeship space too. Yep, perfect. Thanks, Wendy. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, PwC is a, a professional services firm, which really means that we provide industry-focused um, services, working with companies to solve problems that they may be facing or indeed um, prevent issues becoming problems. And we work with a, a, a wide variety of clients from large corporates to private sector, charities, healthcare, entrepreneurial businesses and, and, and all that, that remains in between. My, my role is as a people and operations director across the UK and I am also student recruitment sponsor within Northern Ireland. So talent and developing talent um, is a key focus for me. So within PwC Northern Ireland, we have um, we actually have two apprenticeships running, although there are a wide variety of apprenticeship models, as Jude's already outlined. 
Um, so we have, the first one that we have is a Flying Start uh, business management program, and that's with um, Ulster. And it lasts for four years where students um, join us and spend four days a week with PwC uh, working um, with all of their colleagues. And then they spend one day a week at university. And um, we also have another uh, a type of model, which is run through Queen's. So that's our tech degree apprenticeship. And it's slightly different because the students will spend a block of time with, at university and then 10 week placements out with us. And they will also have a year placement as well. So that's embedded into the, the four years. So you know, different models just to suit different business needs. Um, and I suppose PwC benefits from being a large organization. So we can have that flexibility to, to introduce different models depending on the type of business or the part of the business that we want to support. I mean, PwC, as you say, it's a big organisation. You've got lots of people who've done accountancy degrees and so on, uh, degrees in all sorts of other areas as well. Um, is there a difference between your degree apprentices and the others? You know, it's, uh, is it obvious who's, who's which? Um, is it obvious who's which? Um, I, I would say that I would say that largely the organisation benefits, you know, from having both routes coming into the organisation. But we also have to be real and recognise that for apprenticeships, we find that we have to put in additional infrastructure and support for school leavers. Um, you know, they don't have necessarily that that four years lived experience elsewhere, um, but they come with real energy and vibe, and they have made a conscious choice that this is what they want to do. You know, working and studying, as we all know, is very difficult. Um, and it presents challenges, but it's also hugely rewarding. So I think they've made a conscious choice to do this. And actually with that comes sheer determination and uh, commitment. And, and, and as Jude says, you know, like they learn things, they learn things on a weekly basis and then they're coming back in and introducing it all the time to us. So it almost feels like we're, we're constantly evolving on a continual basis with them. So you're constantly hitting the refresh button through your your apprentices, which is pretty okay. good. Uh, yeah, Johnny, is. I saw I saw you nodding um, sagely there uh, as Debs was talking about the fact that it's it's a conscious choice uh, and that you know that it's hard to be working and studying at the same time. Yeah. Talk to us a, a bit about that because it, it it's not an easy thing. Sure, it's not. Yeah, I actually wrote down a point when you said that, Deb, uh, because um, basically. If I went to university anyway, I would have had to work at the same time, you know, maybe after going attending my lectures or something like that, you know, um, so I would have had to work anyway. So for me, I thought of it as I was actually getting to work for Deloitte as I joined uh, the Bright Star Scheme with Deloitte. I was getting to work for Deloitte during the week and then I was going to university on a part time basis. So one day a week on the Friday, it was allowing me to make the money that I would have needed anyway, you know, to pay for the things I want to do or wh whatever I have, you know, going on. Um, and actually go to university and, you know, it'd be organized for me, you know, it wasn't being overstretched or anything like that. And um, so at the same time, yes, it's hard to work and study, but I would have been doing that at the start. I would have had to do that anyway. And um, so for me, it was actually a really nice way to do it. And um, it was organized. I had my, you know, my working hours set and my university hours set. And then, you know, after you know five o'clock, quarter past five, I was able to do whatever I wanted. I didn't have to worry about where my money was coming in. You know, I didn't have to worry about where I was going to pay for my, you know, rent, you know, if I was living at uni, if I was living out of the house, things like that. It was all it was all kind of set for me. Oh, so a definite bonus there as far as you were concerned. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Dermot, um, yours is a very interesting case study here in that um, you have degree apprentice degree apprentices at Clonallan Laboratories. Before we go into that, tell us a bit about what you what your company actually does. So good morning, Wendy. My name is Dermot Dempster and uh, Clonallan Laboratories manufactures surgical procedural packs for use in surgical theatres and we distribute these to countries all around the world. So these contain all the necessary components to carry out an operation from start to finish without the need to stop in the middle of an operation to have someone go to the surgical store cupboard and get a nice amount. So it makes this the procedure a lot more efficient in terms of resources and timing. And, um, and it was a concept that I discovered when I was working with Johnson & Johnson in North America and while pursuing an MBA degree at the Ulster Business School. And I had to write this thesis up and eventually we took the business model and we brought it to life. 
So where do your uh, degree apprentices then fit in to your business model and to what you're doing there? So we've taken on a, a young a young guy from school, a guy called uh, Luke Hudson, uh, who was uh, employed to be our bid manager. So a lot of the business in the NHS and in the HSE in the Republic of Ireland is, is gathered through putting in formal tender submissions. And that was Luke's job. And Luke approached me saying, look, I'd like to get a third level education while continuing to work. And, you know, it brought me back to my days when I was doing an MBA part time with the Ulster Business School. Um, and I said, yes, we will support that because, you know, it it upskills the guy. And it also means that the knowledge that he's getting um, from doing the degree has an immediate application in terms of his tender submissions. And we're already seeing this in terms of tender successes. He's won a couple of uh, tenders and that eventually next year will translate into job creation. That's very interesting. So uh, that's a real kind of tangible example of that refresh of of the new ideas coming in straight away. And uh, when you hear that, um, can you understand why I think the figures are that there's only 10% of companies in Northern Ireland uh, who are getting in, involved with apprentices. I mean, it seems like a bit of a no-brainer, really, doesn't it? It, it is a no-brainer. I mean, it, it obviously means a little bit of planning, both for the company point of view and also from the student's point of view. So but we're already seeing the tangible benefits that he's bringing, bringing new knowledge to, to the company, bringing you know, new ways of, of structuring his responses to the tender submissions. And that's all in a, in a, in a, very, in a very positive light. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a win-win for both you know, the, the apprenticeship uh, student and also for the company. And I re- would really encourage more companies to do that. Uh, that, that's, that must be music to your ears, Judith, whenever you, you hear that, um, that. That's presumably exactly what you're aiming for. Absolutely. And we have a whole um, range of, of different options across the university and also within the business school as well from business tech we've also developed up an undergraduate program responding to our huge growth in Northern Ireland around fintech and the fintech sector and um, of course you mentioned earlier accountancy and then at the postgraduate level as well in in areas that finance and um, tech innovation so you know and we're working with business all the time to understand where the needs lie you know, how we can help develop talent and um, where we can support business. So I would say if you're considering it or, you know, our doors are very much open, you know, pick up the phone, get a chat with us and we can uh, match you up with with a a programme that would suit your business and and the particular area that the apprentice is working in. And it's great to see, you know, we work with all different sectors across um, Northern Ireland. It's great to see students like Luke coming in from all different areas and um, having sharing all their different experiences on a Friday of their different workplaces. And it just re- creates a really dynamic learning environment. And uh, although we work obviously with the larger the Deloitte's and the, the PwCs and so on, it's definitely there as an option for, for all types of sectors and SME um, growth businesses, business looking to innovate and, and change. And, and as you say, the word dynamic, you know, bring in a new, a new approach to how things are done. And yes, it requires some support, particularly at that school labour level. But we find that the students that um, do choose this option are very motivated and um, very driven and can contribute early into, into the team and into the workplace. Johnny, were you aware whenever you were still doing your apprenticeship that that, that was what you were doing? You know, were you, were you um, buzzing to get back in on a Monday morning because something that you'd learned on the Friday was going to really make a difference? Well, I, uh, I believe Deloitte, um, you know, were sort of helping us university sort of shape our degree. Am I right in saying that, Judith? Um, oh, yeah we're, yeah, we're always sort of looking to, to innovate and keep, keep you know, all our programmes updated and we'll always be speaking with employers all the time to do that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so what we were learning was very relevant to what we were actually doing at the time in work. You know, we'd do modules. So I was a technology consultant and we would do modules in Oracle um, and SAP and large ERP systems. Um, so I was actually actively working with that in work. So when I learned at Muni on the Friday, I could come in on Monday knowing a bit more, maybe shed some light for other employees, you know, something I learned on the Friday. Um, it, it helps. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, mean, I guess it makes you quite excited because you've learned something additional to what you learned in work. 
about what you're actually working on. And um, so it definitely helps you improve. It definitely, um, yeah, it, it was it was it was really good. It was really good in that in that sense. And Debs, from a from a business perspective, could you talk a bit about what has motivated PwC and and your organisation to get involved in apprenticeships? I I know that that's been the case for quite some time because I can remember back in my inside business days, um, having PwC apprentices in the studio uh, and, you know, the kind of excitement that there was uh, around her. But you're really sold on this idea. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, we we, we, we love apprenticeship routes. And I think as an organisation, we're, we're constantly looking about how do we create a diverse workforce because we know that we all benefit from that diverse thinking too. So it's a... We, we know that one size doesn't necessarily fit all to learning and development. And Johnny's the perfect example of somebody who's made a conscious choice, who, who wants to earn and, le- and learn at the same time. But we're, we also want to make sure that we reflect the communities within which we work too. So, you know, we, ha- we have to make sure that we, we make us as an organization accessible to people. And the, the degree um, route is a very valuable route for us as an organization, but it shouldn't be the only route that we ever rely on. So we're constantly looking at different, um, different channel channels into the business and the apprenticeship route allows us um, very easy access to uh, students, those school leavers coming in, um, yeah. So we're, we're definitely sold on. It. And actually, uh, you know, part of my role is um, looking across our UK locations to continually think: Are there different skills that we need to build for the future that we should be creating? You know, more more apprenticeship opportunities for. I mean, one of the things that uh, that always comes up uh, when uh, apprenticeships are being discussed is the perception uh, of an apprenticeship. I mean, I, I wonder. If it's a graduate apprenticeship, is does that change the perception, particularly maybe as regards the parents and the careers teachers at school and so on? I'm sorry to kind of be hard on them, but but sometimes it would seem they don't really understand the the advantages uh, and the, the the opportunities that arise from this. Debs, would you like to discuss that maybe? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You're absolutely right, Wendy. I mean, we know that we, as a as an organisation, we have to invest heavily in educating uh, potential students going forward on apprenticeship routes, the the careers, um, teachers, and and parents are being brought on a journey with us as well. Absolutely. But I mean, in terms of in terms of a perception around degree apprenticeships versus other apprenticeships, again, I think we're seeing a change. You know, we do a lot of work with schools and students and our best advocates are people like Johnny. And, you know, there's any amount of of his network of fellow apprentices that um, have an amazing story to tell. And and part of the story we like to get across and and Johnny will maybe um, come in on this too, is that you're not turning your back on a traditional kind of uni experience. We try to make it as, you know, authentic an experience as we can. Obviously, you're only with us one day a week. But Johnny, for example, went and did a, a Go Philly um, study abroad program back when we could travel and um, as well as that um, you know careers teachers there are so many options out there and careers teachers are very good about you know having to, to keep up with with all the different um, pathways available to students now because it is certainly some, from from my days coming through there are a lot more options um, for people so it's about exploring and there's lots of events to go and find out more either through the university or through employers um, but the big sell and this is one for me as well as a parent is um, that the, the fees are covered by DFE so um, as part of the economy as long as all the paperwork is, is you know met and um, you know, all the requirements are met, um, which is the big, I suppose, selling point, you know, of an apprenticeship, as well as as earning your wages, your um, degree is also covered for you. Um, so that, again, is, is widening access to a lot of students where maybe university wasn't an option for them in terms of fees and things. So there's um, there's a lot of good, good stories to tell. And as Johnny said, you know, you may as well work in an area that's relevant to your degree and, yeah. and uh, study. But yeah, Johnny, maybe you'll come in on yeah. that. Yes, do, please, Johnny. Yeah, so the, there's a few uh, points you'd have touched on. So I'll try and hit a few. But uh, yeah, so yes, I did go um, to the Ulster University one day a week. So it does seem quite short, but um, you'd have mentioned the Go Philly program. So what was nice was we were still allowed to join uh, these pro- programs that uh, Ulster University set up. Uh, Go Philly was um, a program where 100 students from Ulster University uh, were able to go to Philadelphia uh, for five days. 
was like 200 pounds or something due to and um, so it was a great opportunity for everyone you know it was affordable for everyone um but basically we were allowed to join that and i actually went on that trip and um, went to philadelphia, philadelphia for five days i actually got to meet other students um inside Austin university um, a lot with you know common interests um, of me because there were different programs going on. Uh, I had more of like a linguistic um, photography based one, and um, which is like my personal interests. So that was nice. I got to meet people from the uni outside of the, the Deloitte course. Made a few friends off that, um, and it was just an experience that I really really enjoyed. Um, I wish I could have got um, you know doing more of those. Obviously, you know what's going on. They've had to kind of take a bit of a break, but I'm sure they'll they'll start up again very soon. Um, but yeah, what a great experience. And then also to talk about, I mean, my individual experience, you know, when it comes to the apprenticeship, I joined with, you know, 40 to 50 other people um, in my apprenticeship. I went to university classes with those 40 to 50 people. Um, essentially, they were my university friends. I got to work with them, you know, Monday to Thursday as well. So I didn't miss out on meeting people. I didn't miss out on, you know, getting new relationships and, and friends by going to university because I still got to do that. Um, and the difference was, you know, we got to actually, we have a bit of money um, coming from Deloitte. So we could actually, you know, we didn't have to worry about spending our whole student loan. Um, and we actually got to travel with Deloitte as well. So I got to travel with some of my best friends, you know, working Monday to Thursday, for example, in like Bristol or London. And in, a, in, a, in itself, that's just an amazing experience too. It's just completely different, but um, it's one not to be overlooked for sure. Well, certainly that sounds like the case. And when I think back to my brief time at university, there were quite a lot of us who only went one day a week <laughs> but, uh, and, and still managed to make uh, uh, friendships that, that have lasted a lifetime. And Dermot, from, from your company's point of view, you that have Luke as your, uh, your one degree level apprentice, um, what are you looking at now? I mean, would you like to expand that? Do you see that uh, that route as being something that could really benefit your company in the future? Yes, it certainly will. And I think, you know, education is changing so rapidly. I mean, my own case is the point is, is typical example. I mean, I went down the science route, qualified as a microbiologist and a biochemist, worked in uh, clinical trials, but very early on realized that I was too pigeonholed and I needed to broad, broaden the scope of what I could do. So that's why I did the MBA. And I think, you know, apprenticeship will, will allow people who've got one um, qualification to broaden that application so that they can start to pull together um, solutions for complex problems. I mean, if we look at how Clonallon function, you know, we will very often go into a surgical theater. We'll see a clinical problem that has been, been voiced by the clinical team and we can take that back and we can put a solution around that. Now, the next part is that how do we actually produce a product and how do we sell that? And very often that's the piece that's missing. So by combining those two different entities, we now have you know, something that we can go back to the surgical team and say, here's the solution, here's the product, and here's what it costs. So that's the way I would see it going for, for other uh, people coming into the business. I mean, Luke is going down the business route. Obviously, he's weak on the, on the clinical side, but you know, we have another colleague who's purely on the science side. So they complement each other and they're at the same age. So, uh, but I would see that as, as, as a way forward for the next generation coming through you know, a degree in one application and then maybe going into a completely different one to bring those two together to produce a product or a service that can be sold. That's fascinating, isn't it? Because you know, when you think of what's been happening here over the last couple of years, where um, we've seen so many companies and and, and individuals and, and the individuals who are running the companies doing a complete swivel, uh, you know, going in a, in a totally different direction and then using the, that new uh, skill or direction to inform something that they're doing. I mean, uh, everything has changed so much in the last two years, Dermot, hasn't it? It has. I mean, just one statistic I pulled, you know, for, for before I came on this morning. I mean, if we look at the time it take, took in the 1950s to double our knowledge of medicine and science, it took 50 years. By 1980, that's seven years. Today, it's 73 days. So there lies the, both the challenge and the opportunity. And the challenge of those who've graduated maybe a number of years ago is to keep upskilling. And this is where I feel the apprenticeship could come in. But then the opportunities are, I mean, if we look at medicine uh, and, and the application of science to medicine, uh, it's very much in the terms of 
of, of treatment of a disease. That now is moving to prevention. And, and that's going to open up a whole new world of opportunities to the new graduates. And that's where they're going to need these different skill sets to solve these complex problems and provide a product that can be sold. Deborah, I wonder you know, how important you feel degree apprenticeships are, uh, not just to the to your own company and to the companies that you deal with, but perhaps to to the Northern Ireland economy and to the the future of, of that. Given that, I'm sure it's the same for you. You don't have a conversation with any business now uh, when they're not talking about uh, skills and uh, the difficulties that they have in attracting people who have the right skills. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, as a as a as a market, I think that apprenticeships are um, increasingly um, more important and, and relevant. You you know, not also set against the backdrop of the fact that we're just coming out of a pandemic as well. You know, we have a generation of young people who have been significantly impacted by the pandemic and really do feel um, you know the impact on their learning and development. So we'd already touched on it anyway. Apprenticeships before the pandemic have been created and have benefited um, both the student and the organization because they do recognize different learning styles um, on the future workforce. But also to Dermot's point, as an organization, we are creating an environment whenever our people are um, continually learning. You know, it's that con you know, constant acquiring knowledge and skills um, to keep up with the pace by which we, we are all changing and evolving. And I think the apprenticeships uh, at a minimum actually teach uh, students you know that that continual learning from day dot that they start the apprenticeship you know they're working and they're learning all the time and thankfully we have such strong relationships with the universities um, you know that we can adjust and change um, the the topics that the students are learning to to keep pace with the business as well so it's a four-year program what we know today we've, we, what we've planned for an apprenticeship could change in two years time so it's just about how do we constantly evolve um, the skills of our future talent um, so that whenever they do finish the, the apprenticeship, it is absolutely market relevant, if not ahead of what we actually need. Judith, that's fascinating, actually, and, and also that, that that whole business of how uh, the universities have had to become much more flexible in the way they go about things when it's, it's not such a long time since uh, the university decided what the degree course was going to be, and that was that. You just had to kind of fit into it. Uh, I mean, it's very changed days now, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think um, as a business school, we always have worked very closely with businesses across Northern Ireland to keep our curriculum really innovative. But this just, um, I suppose, takes it up a notch again in that the students themselves are adding a, a really interesting dynamic in terms of their sharing their experiences um, they, uh, all of the, the modules of the coursework is assessed very much in an applied basis as you know very live very um, case based you know drawing on experiences from the workplace as well and um, including um, the majority of our programs have a, a kind of research project as a sort of capstone module to cap them off. And it's been fascinating to see all the different areas that people have explored as part of that as they've come through and applying their research skills um, and all of that sort of, as, as Dermot spoke of, the problem solving skills, the, um, you know, all of those sort of innovative um, sort of thought processes and apply it to a problem that they've identified from the workplace and, and sort of add benefit, add an impact as an outcome of that. So, you know, we're, we're constantly sort of innovating obviously we need um to have the core you know the business you know you need to know about um managing people and leading change and and things like that but in terms of the technology and in terms of um current theory and our our staff themselves are, are doing some really cutting edge research and they're contributing and bringing that um into the classroom so between all of that it creates a really really powerful environment for um for, for upskilling the, the talent of, of Northern Ireland's future of work, really. Um, Johnny, what about the, that um, kind of project part of it? Um, you were smiling when Judith was talking <laughs> uh, about that. Uh, would you share with us what, what, what uh, you focused on, if yeah. you can? <laughs> yeah, I was smiling because I was kind of thinking to myself, what did I do? Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was about a year ago, but yeah, I did mine. So, I mean, innovative technologies, I did mine on... Uh, 
optical character recognition. So it was about um, automating the processing of invoices for a business. So, you know, it was about when an invoice comes from um, a customer and, uh, you know, it's sent into a business and basically this, um, the OCR reads the invoice uh, and then automates it and, you know, does all the accounting for you in, you know, in an ERP system. Um, it is innovative uh, technology pretty much, but it was great. You know, I worked um, with a veterinary company and um, I was able to go in, ask them questions, look at how that uh, technology would work for them. I did interviews, you know, I technically ran my own project and what it did for me, it was kind of, it kind of solidified all my learning that went, you know, the few years before this, because this was at the end of my apprenticeship. It, it kind of helped me, you know, piece all the things I'd learned every year together and, and realize, you know, oh, I've learned this, 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 I could probably you know, maybe run a project myself soon, um, you know, with a client. It, it just, it, you know, it, it was actually really important, I think. Um, it just put all that experience in into context for me. Um, and it gave me sort of that, you know, realisation I have the ability to take this further. You know, I, I know more than I thought I did, basically. <laughs> um, great project. Um, you know, we got sufficient time to do it. Um, I know we might talk about uh, the time we get to study, but, you know, Deloitte gave us... Um, you know, study leave, paid study leave. So we actually got to, um, you know, take days off to work on our projects whilst, you know, not losing out on our on our wage. Um, and that was really valuable. But then also, again, I have such a network in Deloitte that I was able to contact some of the professionals I've worked with, um, you know, you know, who've been in the industry for 20, 30 years more. And, you know, I got their advice. I got, you know, their ideas. And I genuinely, with that network, think, I did so well in my project because of the network I had and the advice they gave me and the experience that they were able to bring to the table. Um, so the apprenticeship's much more than just, I guess, you know, your degree. It's like that network as well is so valuable. Yeah, yeah I think um, I think because the future of work is changing so much, you know, a lot of us will be working a whole lot longer than maybe what we had initially planned as well. But as a workforce, we have so many multiple generations now. And, as, um, and I think that there's a real beauty by... How do we merge a lot of those skills and insights from older generations and through lived experiences and also merge and mesh that with younger generation who are probably much more familiar with current trends um, and actually that that probably does end us up in a better position um, because we've merged it together as opposed to maybe relying on um, you know the older generations who we all thought might have had the right answers a long time ago that's not that's not the right way anymore. Dermot, what's your view on all of this now? Because you know, I noticed you were you were listening there with interest, and uh, there were obviously parts of what Johnny was saying and what Judith was saying that uh, that struck a chord with you. I think the key the key thing from the apprenticeship that we're seeing is that you know there's a two way um, there's a two way communication, and I think it's uh, both you know challenges that the business see on a day to day basis. Look, and now can take these two to the business degree. And openly discuss these in, in, in with the students and with the uh, with the academic partners, and come up with a solution that can come back to to, to uh, Clonallan for the benefit of Clonallan. So that's 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 where I would see the benefit now of um, this, this shared experience. Um, and I would hope that you know that when Luke finishes this degree, that he will consider maybe going to do another one uh, through the apprenticeship, maybe onto the masters. Um, and I'm certainly a big advocate of it. And, you know, continual learning now is not a desirable um, thing anymore in the workplace. It's an essential thing. You know, if, if Northern Ireland is going to be competitive, we've got to embrace this and we've got to embrace it at both uh, at business level in partnership with universities. And that's the only way this is going to work. So Judith, let's go through a few of the nuts and bolts of this. Um, if if one is still allowed to say that, it's probably yeah. not relevant anymore. Uh, but anyway, yes. um, who's eligible for degree apprenticeships and how are they recruited? Just remind us of that. Yes, so um, anybody that is resident in Northern Ireland, the business is, is located here. Um, so you, there's two, two, two options. The first is that you are new to the organisation within six months of your degree starting or that you have moved to a new job role with the organization within six months. So maybe onto to a new area or a new project or somebody that's more on the upskilling or reskilling side. Um, and for the school leavers, it tends to be you finish up your exams in the May and you come in and join us in the September. 
Um, so recruitment, as I say, is largely done through organisations themselves. Um, as I say, it's important for them to get the right people into the right roles. Uh, we do work alongside the, the employers to, to help um, them to, to access uh, the, the potential apprentices. So you can either, if you're interested, you can come on to um, the, the DFE, have a great website with um, apprenticeships listed or onto the Ulster University Apprenticeship Hub. And you can see all the different areas that are open um, at the moment in terms of apprenticeships and what the degrees entail and get some more information that way. And we're here to, to answer any questions that you might have. And for employers who are interested in becoming involved, as I say, just reach out to us. It's a very straightforward, I'm sure um, Dermot's just been through the, the kind of um, the process of, of um, becoming an employer through the, the higher level apprenticeships program. Um, and again, that's just a case of, of getting um, some of the paperwork covered and just making sure that the support systems are in place to ensure a good experience for that apprentice. But it's nothing that an employer wouldn't be expecting to do anyway with the new employee. It was easy enough, Dermot, was it? Yeah, it was very straightforward and certainly with Judith's encouragement and direction, it was uh, it was very, very straightforward and, and easy. Uh, and it made you know the um, uh, Luke's journey from, from employment to the university that much easier. And and the fact that we'd sat down and discussed, you know, how how this would work, you know, going forward, you know, everybody's comfortable with it and say we're seeing the immediate benefits of it uh, uh, straight away in terms of increasing the number of tender awards that Luke has been able to get. And that will eventually say in the next year in 2022 translate into new job creation for Clonallan. So that's the immediate effect that we're seeing. And I would expect that will continue um, as Luke um, goes through the degree process. That's terrific, isn't it? Um, Judith, you mentioned DFE there and their website, uh, yeah. which makes me think about funding, finance and, and so on, which is uh, one of the areas that they're involved in, isn't it? What funding is available for employers and apprentices? Yeah, so um, at the moment there is, you know, additional incentives with um, having come through the, the pandemic. So um, there is... Um, sort of opportunities there to encourage employers to take on an apprentice and I would encourage you to sort of um, look into those as you know on a, a sort of year by year basis as they are um, sort of rolled out so at the moment there's you know three thousand pound sort of grant towards taking on a new apprentice up until um, the 31st of March um, you know, I'm not sure if that'll be you know, continued on to next year um, but as was the main funding is the, the degree itself so that is dealt with between ourselves um, and DFE so the employer doesn't even need to to worry about that um, we we um, sort of agree with them and uh, the employer as I say we liaise with and you know we talk to, to the employer about their apprentices progress but in terms of the funding that is sort of handled by ourselves and and DFE. And Johnny um if you were talking to someone, I mean, one of the things I didn't ask you actually was what what your friends think about this. So I was talking to a young woman last week who was doing a an MN uh, as part of her apprenticeship, and she was saying that she had done the whole university thing, had gone and stayed in a fl student flat with her friends who were all at uni. Uh, they were on a student loan, and she had her, she had her wages coming in, uh, which uh, worked out very nicely for her, I think. But I mean, how did your friends react to this? Well, maybe particularly the ones who had gone straight to university. Yeah, good question. Um, so at the start, you know, when I just first decided to do the apprenticeship, I think they uh, didn't really understand it. So the whole, you know, demystifying the, um, I don't know, thoughts about an apprenticeship um, and you have to go to university. At the start, they didn't really get it. You know, they thought, okay, um, you know, they just let me do what I wanted to do. They didn't see the real benefits of it. When I sat down, sat down, talked them through it, you know, they started to realize, okay, you're getting your university um, paid for, you're getting paid, you're getting the travel, no student debt, no student loans, the benefits kind of keep going. And um, so sort of over time or over some sort of maybe 10 minute conversation, they started to realize and started to realize it was a good idea. A lot of them actually thought, I want to do that now, or I should have done that or that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, you know, as time went on, as I traveled, as I got to work, as I did more things with Deloitte, they started to realize, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Um, it is something I could talk about for quite a while as well. Um, but yeah, I think they realize, they realize and 
they realize now anyway, or at least throughout my journey, that um, it was a great opportunity and that, you know, it's definitely benefited me when uh, they have student debt and I have nothing. So. And you believe you got the most out of out of your uh, degree level apprenticeship. Uh, I mean, what, 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 how do you see it helping you in the next few years? Well, I mean, um, I did get a lot out of it. I think what I benefited from was, yeah, that sort of shared learning between actual, you know, hands on working um, and then, you know, the university life, putting it all into context. I think it just kind of helped me understand the business well understand what i'm doing very well i mean that'll only help me you know in the long run in terms of you know promotion you know value as a employee um it just it lets me sort of have a bit of freedom and um, i can you know i guess you know choose my path in deloitte because i actually understand it better you know um yeah it, yeah um i don't know it's just it just really does help it's just great I, I think, it, 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 I know, sorry, I was just going to say, I think different organizations, it will, it, will, it will be different depending on what model you employ. But for us, yeah. the degree apprenticeship is a real fast track um, to somebody's career. So at the end of the four years, um, that that uh, student will be at a higher grade than somebody who's joining on a, on a graduate route because the grad is still going to have to learn a lot of the workplace skills too. So it yeah. truly is a fast track. Um, and I think that's what, you know, Johnny has definitely benefited from. Yeah, and definitely. Deborah, well, what what advice would you offer to other organisations who those kind of ninety percent here in Northern Ireland uh, who who haven't bought into this for some reason, who but who are maybe considering the option and just aren't sure at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely encourage everybody to be open minded to alternative routes. You know, we we've had it running for a number of years and are and are definitely seeing massive benefits. Um, I think uh, Jude's already talked about it, but. You know, reach out and speak to the universities because they will have a, a really broad understanding of all of the different types of organizations that have accessed it and um, no doubt you will definitely find somebody who is in your sector in your market that might have benefited from it and they can bring that to life you know through through their own experiences and you know reach out to different organizations as well and just really understand how do they make it work what support have they had to implement um, because I do think that you know there are so many different models that you can, they're so flexible, you can really um, have, a, have a multitude of different choices in terms of how would you employ it um, within your own business. So uh, be curious um, and speak to people um, is definitely uh, my two top tips. Dermot, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I say we're, we're a big fan of it. Um, I can't speak high enough of it. I think it's the new, it's a new way for educating staff um, in the future um, to combining the ability to work and to uh, learn at the same time and taking that learned experience into the workplace and actually utilizing it and producing a solution to a problem that ultimately was going to result in either the creation of a product or uh, the creation of, uh, of additional jobs uh, for the company. Well, I think that that uh, wraps it up beautifully for, for all of us. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for joining me for this podcast. And thank you to everyone who's uh, listening or watching it at the moment. I really hope that we've helped to demystify the world of degree level apprenticeships for young people and for businesses. Huge thanks to Judith Wiley, to Deborah Stevenson, Dermot Dempster and Johnny Mooney. I'm Wendy Austin. This has been a Business of Possibility podcast for Ulster, uh, Ulster University Business School. You can stay up to date with the Business School on social media. Thank you so much for listening to the series and don't forget to tell all your friends. Thanks. Thanks.